Hi folks, this is Checkpoint Quiz 2.4. Number one, we're asked to solve this inequality and check the answer graphically. And so the troublesome thing about this inequality is we have an x inside the absolute value as well as outside the absolute value. This means you're going to have to break this up into cases. So we go back to the definition of absolute value. And the absolute value of something is one of two things. It's either the opposite of what's in there, if the opposite of what, of what if what's in there is less than zero, or it's what's in there, if what's in there is bigger than or equal to zero. So the absolute value in this inequality is the absolute value of x plus 2. So that's either the opposite of the quantity x plus 2, if the quantity x plus 2 is less than zero, or it's x plus 2 itself, where x plus 2 is greater than or equal to zero. So the absolute value of x plus 2 is minus x minus 2 for x less than negative 2 or x plus 2 for x bigger than or equal to negative 2. Once again, I'm just simplifying these expressions and I'm just solving for these conditions. So we're going to have two cases when we solve this. We're going to have the case where x is less than negative 2 in the case when x is greater than or equal to negative 2. Alright, case 1. x is less than two, negative 2. So my inequality, 1 minus x over 2, is less than or equal to the absolute value of x plus 2. In this case, x is less than negative 2. So when x is less than negative 2, the absolute value of x plus 2 is equal to this. So I'm going to replace this formula with that formula. And I'm going to solve this linear inequality like you did back in Algebra 1. I'll multiply both sides by 2. Since 2 is a positive number, it's not going to affect the uh, sense of the inequality. So on the left-hand side, I get 1 minus x is less than or equal to 2 times minus x minus 2. So 1 minus x is less than or equal to negative 2x minus 4. I can add 2x to both sides to give me x less than or equal to negative 5. Now, I'm in the case x is less than negative 2, which means I'm just looking at this part of the number line. Let's see how this solution fits in with this part of the number line. Well, this is where negative 2 is, this is where negative 5 is, and I want the x less than or equal to negative 5. So I can keep all of this solution because all of it is less than negative 2. All right, now it's time for case 2. Case 2, then, is x greater than or equal to negative 2. So here's my inequality. Now x is greater than or equal to negative 2, so I'm going to use this formula for the absolute value of x plus 2. Multiply both sides by 2, just as before. And then go through and solve, just as before. Here I'll add x to this side and subtract 4 from that side. And I then divide by 3. And I get x greater than or equal to negative 1. Now as before, I need to be cognizant that this is my solution, but I'm in case 2. So let's look at how these things work together. Case 2, x has to be greater than or equal to negative 2. So this is the part of the number line I'm looking at. My solution, x is greater than or equal to negative 1. So on the number line, negative 1 would go here, and I include negative 1 and everything to the right. So every, all of my solution is in this uh, particular region, which means I'm going to keep all of it. Okay, so now for the grand final answer. 
I broke up the number line at negative 2. And for x is less than negative 2, I found the answer to be x less than or equal to negative 5. And for the x is bigger than or equal to negative 2, I found my answers to be x bigger than or equal to negative 1. So I put them together to get my final answer. Minus infinity to minus 5 bracket union bracket negative 1 to infinity. All right, now we have to check our answer graphically. So how do I do that? Well, I'm going to get let the left-hand side be f of x. And I'm going to let the right-hand side be g of x. So this inequality is the same as looking where f of x is less than or equal to g of x. And as we mentioned in class, f of x is less than g of x when the graph of f is below the graph of g, f of x equals g of x when the graphs of f and g intersect. So I need to sketch oops, a good graph of this situation. So let me, that didn't go well. Draw the axes here. Let's look at the graph of f. f is a line. Okay, The highest power of x there is x to the first. Let me just plug in a couple of points. Okay, Thinking back to our solution set, negative 1 and negative 5 were key points in the solution. So I'm going to plug in uh, negative 1. I get uh, 1 minus negative 1 is 2. 2 over 2 is 1. So on the graph of f, I've got negative 1, 1. I plug in negative 5. 1 minus negative 5 over 2 is 6 over 2. That's 3. All right. f is a line, or f is a linear function. Its graph is a straight line. So I will do my best to draw a straight line here. Okay, so that's y equals f of x. Now let's look at y equals g of x. When I plug in negative 1, I get negative 1 plus 2, absolute value is 1. When I plug in negative 5, the absolute value of negative 3 is positive 3. Well, what's the graph of g look like? Well, I can think back to transformations. I know the absolute value of x looks like this v. This is the point zero, 0, By adding 2 inside the absolute value, I'm going to shift that v to the left two units. So that's where the v is going to be. So sure enough, if I'm looking for where the line is below the v, in other words, where the blue curve is below the red curve, it's everywhere up to x equals negative 5. So as I come up to neg x equals negative 5, the blue curve is always below the red curve, as well as everything from 1 on out, the blue curve is below the red curve. So that's what it means to interpret it graphically. That'll do it for number 1.